Our team of meteorologists have been going through climate data for weeks now to put this winter forecast together, and we do two main things. We look at what has happened in the past, and then we look at global changes that could influence our weather. So we start by looking at what has happened so far this year. We had a pretty typical spring. We had temperatures this summer that were a little above normal. We obviously had periods of drought this summer, but we ended up with a decent amount of rain. And then we will look at September and October. September was really dry, but warmer than normal. And October has been warm, but much wetter. And so we take the conditions from what has happened this year, and we go back in the past and see if there are any similar years that had similar conditions. I found quite a few years that had very similar temperatures for the year. And I found some other years that had very similar precipitation, but we didn't have a lot of matches that were exact on both of those, except for one, 1931, had similar precipitation and temperatures for the year so far. And that's probably not a very good comparison, though, because it was over 90 years ago. The climate was a little bit different than compared to what it is now, so it's not likely to give us a lot of good guidance to how our winter is going to be. So we didn't get much help from past years uh, on what is going to happen for this winter. So now we have to look at global changes that are happening. You've probably heard the terms El Nino or La Nina. Well, this winter we are expecting a strong El Nino to develop, and that refers to the warming of ocean water in the central and eastern Pacific near South America. And I know that seems like a long way from Indiana and Michigan. However, when this anomaly or changes in the water temperature happens here, it actually sets off a chain reaction of changes in the air and water circulation of the globe. So specifically for the United States, what it does is it keeps a jet stream pretty strong and persistent in the southern half of the country. So for winters during El Nino, places like California get stormy and really wet conditions. The southeast gets really wet conditions and typically through the northern half of the country and the Great Lakes, we typically in El Nino years get warmer and drier winters. So knowing that about El Nino, we went back and looked at years that had similar strength of El Nino conditions. And these are the seven years that we found. And when we broke down the winters during the, this time, what we found is that when we look at temperatures, temperatures, this is kind of a breakdown of each of those years, temperatures typically ended up above normal normal for the winter months. Certainly there were some outliers, but overall they averaged above normal temperatures. When we looked at precipitation in these same years, when and that includes rain and snow, they were either near normal or below for precipitation. Now that's rain and snow. If we just break it down into snowfall, we found that oh, the majority of the time we had below normal snowfall. So taking all of these findings into account and the fact that we think El Nino will have the most significant impact on what, how our forecast will play out and how our winter will play out. Our official forecast for this winter is this. We are going to forecast for temperatures above normal. Now that does not mean you're going to be wearing shorts this winter. Above normal means above 26.9. That's our, our average or mean temperature in winter. So even if we're significantly above normal, we will still see temperatures below freezing. It may just mean that we see more mixed precipitation. As far as precipitation, both rain and snow, we are going to forecast below normal amounts of precipitation for the winter. And I want to point out, while the whole winter historically is below average, there was some historical evidence of a really wet December, and then we got really dry in January and February in those El Nino years. So that may play out nicely for some snow right before Christmas. And then our snowfall forecast for this winter, we are still going to forecast snow. I can tell you that we're calling for 60 inches of snow. That puts us below normal for snowfall. While we will see less storms because of that jet stream being in the southern half of the country, less storms means less system snow, but we still have Lake Michigan. Uh, lake Michigan is still the wild card, and I still think there's some potential for some pretty big lake effect snows through the course of the winter. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carrie Pujo.